Well, that green winter we had here in Ottawa and across most of eastern Canada is obviously gone. But the concerns about global warming remain. In fact, this place, Ottawa, is getting greener and greener every day. And the report that we had this week, of course, coming out of Europe, that the climate is irreparably damaged by global warming and may take a thousand years to repair if it ever repairs, or we may be living with these consequences for a thousand years, I think has woken a lot of people up. Now, the Environment Minister, John Baird, is in Paris today, and this whole place is getting obsessed with what is happening over there and what, in fact, this government, the Harper Conservative government, is going to do about it. So MPTV was at a briefing today by scientific community releasing these results. We also talked to the Environment Minister for the Liberals, uh, John Godfrey, as well as some scientists, and we want to bring you up to date on exactly what's happening with this issue, this incredibly important issue from a Canadian perspective. Here we go. Climate models are based on sound physical principles and are the main tool that we use to estimate future climate change. They're very valuable and useful. And verbatim, the main message that I should try to get across to you from the report is the following statement. It is very likely that greenhouse gas increase caused most of the temperature increase observed since the 1950s, and this will continue into the future. And what you'll notice here is in this case, we have no warming. If anything, since the mid 20th century, we would have seen cooling in the absence of increasing greenhouse gases. It's this kind of information and much more contained in the report that leads us to conclude that increasing greenhouse gases are very likely cause most of the warming we've observed since the 1950s. And just like in the global case, what we see here, continent by continent, each one is warming, and each one is warming mostly because of the increase in greenhouse gases. That's one of the main messages. In 2025, it is predicted that the atmosphere will warm on average by about another half a degree Celsius, regardless of the scenario that we choose. We really have very little control over this. We're more or less stuck with it. There is a range of predictions uh, from the climate models. They range from about one degree Celsius rise at 2100 to about four degrees. That's a wide range. And it tells us that we actually, the choices we make today can influence what we'll see at the end of the century. Maybe not in the next two decades, but certainly by the end of the century, we might see it's the difference between a one degree C or a four, four degree C rise. And so I say at the top, the choices we make now will matter eventually. There are just two messages here. The, uh, the projections show that the land areas will warm faster than the ocean. And most importantly for us in Canada, the high northern latitudes are going to rise the most. In fact, they have risen in temperature twice as fast as the, as the globe on average, and it is predicted they will continue to warm into the future. I know uh, David Aiken again from CTV. Um, I know we're, we're talking to scientists today, but I wonder if I could ask you to think like a poet for a minute. Um, <laughs> In the sense that Canadians, whether they agree or don't agree with all this, you know, this is the, the images like the Great White North, the Frozen North, the land of the polar bear. These are all things I think most Canadians say is, this is us, this is what we're all about. I wonder if you would say, in 2050, in 2060, what will Canadians then be talking, what kind of country will they be talking about? Will we be the Great White North still then? I am hardly a poet, and it, what I say will certainly show it. Um, but uh, no, I mean, uh, I, I you know, I mean, the reality is that our climate will be different. Uh, I mean, uh, I have grandchildren. Uh, you know, when when they're my age, the climate, the 2050 era, you know, of Canada will be different. We will still have wind, snowy winters. They will be less frequent, less amount of snow, as Dr. Flato said. Uh, we will have changes in our ecosystem. The parklands that we may admire and enjoy so much now will be affected by a changing climate. The trees are there because of the climate of the past hundreds of years. The climate of the future will be different in different places. Well, we'll basically moving. And so we will have a different climate. Uh, it's not all gloom and doom, but it's, in my day, I'm concerned. Very concerned. Thank you. Do you think the current government gets the uh, message that the environment is important to Canadian citizens? Well, based on everything we've read in the, uh, in the popular press over the past uh, week or so, 
uh, it looks as though the government has got this message uh, in spades. Uh, we've yet to see how it will respond to the message. You care to comment on the, uh, the, the conference uh, today and the one in, in Paris a, a few days ago about uh, the environment and uh, our government representative, John Baird, that's gone over there? Well, I think the, the, the event of the release of the fourth assessment report of the IPCC uh, is really a watershed uh, in, the <coughs> in the development of the scientific uh, understanding of, of climate change. The evidence is now unequivocal uh, to the effect that the planet is warming and that it's warming as a consequence um, of anthropogenic uh, effects. And uh, we'll see um, what the impact of this is on the current government uh, and on uh, its uh, uh, current environment ministry. We're hoping to see a policy response. Uh, what would you, if, if you had the, the year of the environment minister today, um, what would you, say, what would you take, uh, say to him? Well, I would say uh, to him, just as, I've, just as I've just said, that the science contained in the fourth assessment report of the IPCC uh, is unequivocal uh, in the message that it sends about the importance of the anthropogenic contribution uh, to current climate change. The earth is warming and it's warming because primarily because of the greenhouse gases that we commit, uh, continue to emit uh, in overly large amounts. What do you think the impact of uh, today's conference here in Ottawa is, is going to uh, uh, affect the, the Canadian public and, and current government policy? Well, today's announcement simply confirms uh, the direction of what all the scientists have been saying but gives more detail on the reality and severity of climate change, the fact that it's attributable to human activity and the urgency of reducing greenhouse gases in the future and for governments to take action. Just as Garth Turner has been an advocate for this within his former caucus and remains an advocate independently, I think the message to politicians is you do have to get on with it in a way where you're not just making claims but you can say if these are the six main sources of greenhouse gases in Canada, we've got to have strategies for addressing each section of that, whether it's transportation, whether it's how we produce oil and gas, whether it's what industry does, whether it's what residential folks do, uh, whether it is uh, the agricultural sector, where, whatever it is, we need strategies for each of those because that's where the stuff is coming from. And we have to count honestly about what each of our policies will do to bring down greenhouse gas emissions. Other than sending uh, Mr. Baird to the conference in Paris this week, do you think that the current Conservative government gets the message that the environment is very important to Canadian citizens? I think the Conservative government has realized, belatedly, in a kind of deathbed conversion way, that the environment is hugely important to Canadians. They can read the polls as best as anyone. They do not have the conviction that climate change is urgent or real or scientifically established as as the members of their caucus revealed when they were quizzed on this uh, coming out of their caucus meeting on Wednesday. They will do as much as they have to as a Conservative government and as little as they can to deal with the issue. Not to deal with climate change but to deal with the fact that it's now high on the public agenda. And uh, that won't be good enough. You have to have the conviction that this really is a problem. It's really urgent as Stéphane Dion has. Do you think the Conservative government uh, will adopt uh, uh, a more uh, aggressive approach to have the conviction to follow up with, with dollars for this uh, concern? I doubt that they'll follow up with dollars because they, they won't have many, I suspect, for, for, for this in the next budget. I suspect they will make a great show of concern. That's why they sent Mr. Baird to Paris. There'll be a huge difference between that and being willing to get on fast with the kinds of measures that we need to undertake to stop the growth of greenhouse gas emissions. We weren't perfect, that's for sure, but at least we learned from our mistakes and we recognized them and we tried to improve our plans and we will in the future. We think Canadians are willing to go further than they were previously because they everybody gets it. And the sooner we get on with it, I think the happier Canadians will be with their politicians.